Rail 60E, they don't really have any uh, adjustments. So what we're going to do in this case is we're just going to check all these terminals, the wiring they haven't worn through if um, they've been wriggling on the in the transmission and rubbing on the on the pan or on the valve body. Uh, we'll just make sure everything's um, nice and secure. We'll clean the transmission pan and the magnet. Um, another good idea, or well, it's fairly essential to do, is the oil around the outside of the pan rail here. Um, before you put the cork rubber gaskets back on, it's a good idea to, to make leave it dry. Because what happens, um, just like when you put string into water and eventually over time the the fluid through uh, what do they call it osmosis will will just go from the the wet area to the dry area and then um, these will end up weeping the customer will probably say hey I've got a transmission oil leak or since you've done the transmission service it's it's leaking oil you haven't done it properly um, because they're cork rubber um, pan gaskets on these um, you don't over tighten them as well uh, you know if you have to nip them up over time what happens if you over tighten them the little hole will sort of tend instead of it being flat and uh, perpendicular to the the pan rail if you over tighten them it'll bend the hole up and the tighter you actually do the uh, the bolt will actually cut into the gasket so but anyway, we'll, we'll go ahead now. We might even just check the um, tension on these bolts, just make sure they're all nice and tight. Uh, we do that with a tension wrench. If you over tighten it, it's not good because um, it's only alloy and it's bolted into alloy. Um, when you have different materials like metal bolted to alloy, because they have different heating and cooling rates, um, they'll actually move over time and some of these bolts can become loose so it's a good idea to just check everything. In the filter kit you'll have a little seal that fits up in here where the, the filter is. Now it's important, I've seen uh, videos on YouTube where people are trying to knock it out with a screwdriver and what happens you'll end up damaging the the housing. The best idea is just to get a, a pair of these opening pliers, whack it in there and just twist it slowly left and right until you get it out or it's enough so you can get uh, a hold of it with a pair of pliers and pull it out. Now we'll go ahead and because I can't film and work with one arm so <laughs> um, I'll take that out, replace that, put another filter in, clean the magnet in the pan I clean the pan externally and internally and we'll dry off this pan rail uh, retention all these all these little bolts holding the valve body there just check all the connectors and basically return the pan bolt it back up um, when you're tightening these um, you've got to sort of do it in a in a circular motion you'll start off in the middle and then work your way circular it's important for it to be tightened up evenly um, also you don't just tighten it you'll have to actually loosen it back off and then tighten it up what happens these because of the alloy gripping onto the thread um, you'll get a false um, tension on it if you just just go to tighten it you've got to actually loosen it and then re-tighten it the clean pan we've put new gasket on there uh, clean the magnet um, they, these are the so these these I don't know if you can see they're fairly flat or they're even actually pushed down a little bit um, what you can do you can get a round hammer and just knock these back down if they're actually sticking up too high so just to have a nice flat or slightly down is a good idea or they will dig into the uh, the pan gasket and you can see the bits of cork and rubber in the gasket now we'll just proceed to put the uh, new filter on we've cleaned the pan and uh, 
bolt the pan back up. Um, the actual, uh, according to the book, how we torque the uh, the bolts on the valve body. So we start over here and we go in a circular outward motion, and it recommends that these are tightened to uh, 11 newton meter. Now, according to our little tension wrench, 11 newton meter is probably around 90, 90 inch pound. Um, you can get these little, we've had this one for years, but I've seen you can get these little tension wrenches on eBay for about $300. If you're going to uh, do this sort of work, it's probably a good idea to to purchase one of these or find a second hand one, it'll come in handy. Turning the pan back on, it's a good idea to put all the bolts in loose first because um, what happens if the gasket falls out of place um, if you tighten the bolts up it'll actually hold it out of place um, also you'll be able to see if anything's gone amiss you can often see the gasket through the little hole or just slow, slightly peeking on the outside um, if you can I know this will be a little bit difficult to do when you're doing it on the ground um, I'm doing it on the hoist um, but it's a good idea to just get a torch and just have a look around so just so you can see the gasket all the way around if the gasket's fallen inside it's gonna leak there straight away you're gonna be pretty grumpy when you start putting the oil in and it's flowing out somewhere so while it's all nice and clean and dry um, put all the bolts in first loose and then in a cross pattern just tighten them slowly um, don't, and don't over tighten them because these will cut into the gaskets here we're going to check the universal joints now to check these if you can actually feel any movement I'll grab the light a bit better to see if you can feel any movement in these uh, rollers it means it needs replacing what can happen if these over time break this can fall down dig into the road and flip your car over especially if you're doing a higher speed uh, just the weight of the vehicle combined with the speed will give it a lot of leverage um, I've heard of these things happening um, so on this particular tail shaft is rubber mounts on the front and rear uh, just check that they haven't perished or got cracks in them. Uh, there's one, one at the back here too. Uh, the only universal joint is this one here. So the way we do that, you stick your thumb in so it's touching both sides of the thing, of the universal, and you just wriggle it left. You hold while you're holding. I can't do it with one arm, but and film, but. Um, you hold one side and you wriggle the other. If you feel any movement in there by hand, it means it's worn. It shouldn't have any, or very, very, very little, and, I'm, and I mean very little wear in it to be okay. So we'll do that and we'll just check the, uh, the oil level in the diff. Uh, take off this bolt here. It should just, you should be able to just see it coming out a little bit or just be able to touch it with your finger when you poke it in that hole. And then uh, we'll proceed to filling, refilling it with oil. There's a little bit of a procedure when you're filling an automatic transmission, especially when it's completely empty. Um, these particular transmissions take what's called a Dextron 3 fluid. That would be the, the minimum grade. You can put uh, semi-synthetic or synthetic fluid in them um, depending on on what what kind of use you get out of the vehicle would depend on what sort of fluid you get but you always look up the uh, the, the proper transmission fluid quite often the companies will give you the minimum um, requirement or required fluid uh, type and uh, the you know up to the the best quality um, automatic transmission fluid that um, it's not a good idea to put um, 
transmission fluid that's not recommended for that particular vehicle. So um, here I've got a hand pump here. And it's basically one pint or about 600 mils per pump, uh, but we'll call it half a litre. Um, on a transmission, you saw the size of the pan. Uh, the pan sort of determines how much fluid you can fill before it starts coming out of the filler tube. So quite often people think they've overfilled it when in fact they've only filled the pan. Um, no more fluid can physically go in until it's moved. So what you do is you we, we put basically in, in these we put about six pints which is three litres of fluid in then we'll start the vehicle for about 10 seconds that'll pump the oil that has drained out of the filter because we've replaced the filter and whatever's drained out of the torque converter um, or dripped out it'll prime the transmission up for a moment um, if you run it too long low on fluid you'll naturally you'll um, seize up you know the most likely the pump um, when that happens you have to pull it out um, when you're doing a, a full full recondition and the transmission torque converter completely empty you do the same procedure you put um, about three litres of oil in you'll start the motor for about five to ten seconds put another three litres in start it for the same five to ten seconds put another three litres in uh, you'll have about well depending on what what the vehicle is or what transmission is will depend on how much fluid you put in but you've got to get it close to to what um, uh, you'll you'll be able to find on the internet or in your uh, owner's manual how much it takes um, and then when it's close to the desired uh, or the recommended level you can keep the motor running um, on this particular transmission um, it has a dipstick and the oil level is tested at uh, operating temperature because the oil will actually expand as it heats up a little bit so you've got to have it at operating temperature with the motor running uh, because the transmission is essentially a, a hydraulic unit and it relies on all the oil to be where it should be um, so we'll go ahead and uh, pump pump some oil into there and uh, then we'll continue with the video I hope I'm doing a good job this first first transmission video that I've done here we are we've put about four litres of transmission fluid in and we're just we've got our foot on the brake motors running and we're just selecting all the gears for a few seconds just so you can feel the engagement and we're going right through from park right down to first right down to first and then back up into neutral pull the handbrake on and we'll check the oil level all right now we're pretty close to where the oil level should be it's still cold uh, doing this one-handed we just dip it straight in pull it straight out and we keep keep the dipstick horizontal I don't know if you can see it there but we're just on the about the middle middle range of the dipstick it's a bit hard to see I can't get the angle right just get the camera in focus but anyway now we'll uh, basically take it for a test run get it to operating temperature come back uh, recheck the oil level just so it's close to the top hot mark or or on the top mark if you overfill the transmission too much what happens well I'll just turn this off if you overfill the transmission what happens is the oil can hit the rotating parts in the transmission and aerate the oil in a hydraulic unit um, air can be compressed oil can't be compressed so what happens you'll you'll end up with uh, spongy shift uh, spongy application of the bands clutches everything um, and that can actually burn out or help to burn out the transmission or the clutches so uh, having too much fluid in there is almost like having not enough fluid because when you don't have enough fluid 
um, as you're driving around a corner um, and the oil splashes from side to side um, the, the pump will actually suck a bit of air or can suck a bit of air um, and um, it, it, what happens usually a, a good indicator that there's not enough fluid in the transmission uh, apart from obviously leaks um, but that that's another story um, is that when you're going around a corner or on a uphill or incline or or a downhill um, the transmission might uh, do what's called a flare whereas it'll rev rev up um, briefly um, while the transmission's actually looking for for fluid um, it's actually sucking air so anyway we'll take this for a test run now I can't film and drive and uh, we'll get it at operating temperature we'll come back check the oil level raise it up on the hoist again and we'll just check for oil leaks again make sure we've done everything properly do a quick uh, visual inspection and go from there and yeah, we'll just come back from the test drive and we're gonna went for probably uh, oh probably six eight kilometer test drive a lot of stop starting just seeing you know just going through all the paces reverse neutral park etc and now I'll just check the oil level when it's hot with the motor running it's in neutral with the handbrake on uh, before we did that I when I initially stopped uh, went through selected all the gears all the way from park down to first all the way back up and back down into neutral and we're going to check the oil level now and uh, basically the job's done yeah the next video might be uh, actually fitting the oil cooler to this uh, depending on if she wants to put another radiator in or or go for a, an external transmission oil cooler so I'll mention that to her uh, and she can decide which way she wants to go